So, hello my dear. Welcome back to another, well, try and fly, kind of revisit it. Um, I'm going through all my add-ons here on X-Plane 11. The ones that uh, I have partly already tested on my old rig. And one of the aircraft that I haven't uh, been using an awful lot because it didn't really perform very well on my old rig is the Rotate MD-88 I think it's an MD-88 or is it an MD-80 I don't know I'm actually not sure because when you read through the documentation um, you read both <laughs> so I think it's an 88 but uh, anyway it's from the it's a Super 80 hmm. anyway um, very nice aircraft very well modeled aircraft and as we can see <laughs> we have already some loaders here this is ground handling from jar design i have a profile that uh, fits the rotate md80 you can get it uh, as a download go to the jar design ground handling web page and you find a lot of profiles there if they're not already part of the installation now um i think we should open some doors and for that you go into the cockpit of the MD-80, you click here and you get requests for a GPU, that's a ground power unit, the GPS, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what S stands for, it's also some ground power thingy. I usually just call the GPU, I need to find out what GPS is exactly for. Then you can open the, oops, no, you can open the door, you can deploy the stairs, by the way, you can open the aft door and you can open the cargo doors. So, and this actually allows you to, yeah, have an aircraft that is ready for boarding with doors that open. And nice stairs that extend. This door, I think, uh, at least I haven't found a way of opening it yet but all the cargo doors are available and as you can see ground handling fits it nicely we are at WC airport my standard try and fly airport and uh, performance here is very good I have limited my frames to 40 on my new rig and uh, so far I haven't really seen any issues uh, frame wise so they keep relatively stable at 40 frames per second no surprise though I have a good system I think one of the main issues with the Rotate MD-80 on low uh, power systems is the fact that uh, older graphic cards have two or three gigabytes or four gigabytes of uh, VRAM. Now, four gigabytes is probably about the minimum you need to run this aircraft with its 4K textures. And that was my problem. I used to have a 670 with two gigabytes um, which did me a good job for many years, but it just couldn't cope with this aircraft uh, Therefore it was never fun flying this. I didn't really use it at all. So Yeah, now back in my new system I have absolutely no problem with VRAM and I have 4k textures. There is a fix for this uh, if you have a low spec system especially when it's the VRAM that is uh, one of your issues get yourself the 2k textures there are sets and liveries with 2K and that will actually solve some of your problems. So it becomes much more uh, usable, although it is still quite a strain on the system. Not so on, on good uh, performing boxes like this here now. Okay, so this is, <laughs> I, I remember when I started this, apart from the performance issues I had with it, uh, which really didn't well, I didn't really feel like I did a good uh, buy here, you know, at the beginning, because I thought, I mean, this is unusable, the system. It also turned out that <laughs> they had a lot of stuff wasn't coded yet, so they got out with it. Uh, you know how things are. Um, there were still some bugs, and many switches weren't working. You had only one of the IRS systems, uh, the other one was fake, and so it was supposed to be a study level, and I couldn't really see much study in here, <laughs> you know. It was kind of very, very limited because many of the features were not there yet. 
Not anymore, I would say. We are now at version 143 and uh, basically almost all of the cockpit has now been coded and I would think that at least uh, on a basic level all the systems have been coded. So not sure if it is really study level because the documentation that you get is not bad. It is relatively good documentation, don't get me wrong, um, more than we see with other aircraft. but. Uh, it's not the kind of study level kind of documentation that you would expect in that case. All right, but anyway, it's it's there and uh, it's good, it's uh, readable, and uh, you kind of learn how to use this aircraft, although it doesn't go very deep uh, into details. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do our usual um, try and fly here. Um, I had some issues before with the autopilot and the whole handling and the other thing is if we go into the cockpit look at this I said this a couple of times this is the biggest mess I've ever seen in an aircraft now that's not Rotate's <laughs> fault I said that before uh, it's just the way this aircraft has been designed by McDonnell Douglas which is just all over the place <laughs> it's really it's, I, when I started using it again every time I sit in here if I haven't used an MD-80 for let's say one or two months I keep searching for things again because ch I can't remember where things are you really need to do uh, duty in this aircraft regularly in order to kind of get familiarized and find things immediately as soon as you're out and and you fly Boeings and Airbuses and stuff like that you keep forgetting where things are so I've been looking around and I hope that I'll remember everything uh, relatively immediately but let's have a look at the the aircraft as such so the modeling is actually quite nice uh, you can see 4k textures uh, I use high resolution um, and this really looks good so uh, a lot of the or most of the switches are now coded. There are still some areas where there is no coding, but that isn't necessarily a problem um, because uh, you can't you can't change the. Okay, but I don't think they are in the way. Um, but most of the important bits and pieces, or all of the important bits and pieces, I guess they have been coded, and. I'm guessing that they are good enough to have a uh, fairly realistic operation with this aircraft. Now I have something to compare it with and that is the released Mad Dog in prepared. So there is the Leonardo Mad Dog uh, Super 80 or MD80 or whatever it's called. Mad Dog is for the MD, they call that the Mad Dog. Um, and this is also study level and uh, I've actually bought it and I have done my first first very first test flight it's going to be a try and fly eventually and uh, yeah um, so I'm kind of comparing it and when you compare it with the mad dog you realize that uh, it is a slightly less complicated implementation compared to the Leonardo the Leonardo is is actually in is more in-depth system depth kind of thing okay but it doesn't mean that this is a bad aircraft uh, I think it has everything you need and it allows you to actually do the kind of evening flying once you're familiarized with everything here so it's not that complicated um, that it takes an awful long time to get used to but uh, at the beginning when you first time sit in an MD-80 and a cockpit like this I guess you will have a hard time finding things and uh, getting knowing your way around it and knowing what to do when and I'm pretty sure that during the course of this um, test flight I'm pretty sure I'm going to miss out something or f have to start looking for it again for example um, yeah I'm going to show you this in a moment but uh, there had been one or two switches that I've I've I'm keeping uh, I keep looking for them because I can't <laughs> I can't find them immediately. <laughs> it always takes a moment before I um, get uh, remember the the location. 
So I've also been uh, working a little bit on this. Uh, I created myself a C-list file that's based on some stuff I found on the internet. I've started to do automatic checklists uh, based on data refs that come from the rotate. It's nowhere near finished. I've just done the first page and there are even some not working parts in here still. Um, it's just for me to have a guideline how to get through here. Um, the original checklist is similar, very similar to this here. It just doesn't have all the coding that I started to put in. Um, but uh, it helps a little bit to find your way around and kind of for the sequence of what you should do. Now this is not perfect yet. I am planning to use the original documentation in order to get a pre-flight procedure, for example, that is fairly realistic. Um, so I'm nowhere near uh, having this finished, but it should uh, serve us now right at the beginning here. So first thing you do is you get the battery turned on. Now I've already started to also code my hardware. So I have a, a switch on the SciTech that turns on my battery. Um, otherwise you have to kind of uh, move it down here and you can see how this thing turns because normally this is a switch where you have to turn and, and there's kind of a lock there or so that you not easily uh, turn the battery off just by accident. Um, that's why this, this this turns here, okay. Um, the other thing is we have already external power attached. You've seen me doing this by going here and attaching the GPU. And because of that, uh, we would now need to activate the generators. Also for that, I have a switch, which turns them on. And now we have the aircraft under power and we can also turn on the galley. So. Right, let's go through this uh, interesting arrangement of things. So this is the um, the display switches. So flight director, um, AHRS, I suppose that's uh, this thing down here. So there are some settings, as you know it also from the Boeing. Here's the cockpit voice recorder. Um, what I'm still looking for is the flight data recorder. That's one of the switches I haven't found yet. Um, now this is the radio and navigation EFIS. So th these are all kind of the, like the computer switches uh, in a Boeing uh, that determine which of the two systems are used. So normal mode is that uh, probably left and right are using the system one and system two and things like that. What the engine sync for is exactly for, I don't know. It is coded though, and it is off normally. I guess it would synchronize somehow on the N1 value, I'm guessing. I'm not sure whether or not you use this or what you use this for under what circumstances. This is the wind shear, wind sh wind shear test, but uh, there's nothing much. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, the sounds are 3D. So uh, depending on where I'm in the cockpit, I can actually hear things uh, differently loud. Yeah, interesting. So um, then we have some lighting here, thunderstorm lights. So there's lights. And this is the IRS. And again, you need to bring them into the NAV position. I've got a switch for that as well. So bring the two into the NAV and they start aligning. Um, you should maybe make sure that you have your park brake set. The park brake is engaged when the li this little round thingy here is up. So not down, down is disengaged, up is engaged. Right, then here's again some lights. Okay, then comes uh, the anti-skid and a stall test. A max speed warning test. Then here's the logo lights. Then you have the Mach trim computer, I think it is. Uh, here's your yaw dumper and test CKT. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure what that is. There's a tenton call. You can hear some chime there in the back. And below that is the air conditioning, which at the moment we don't have input. So we don't really see anything. Um, 
but these switches here are for the supply. They're currently off. You would probably then later put them into the auto position. And I think if you want to start the, the engines, you leave these in the off position. Then you can do the carbon temperature here, which we have about 15 degrees at the moment. I think it's 15 degrees outside. So as soon as we get warm air, which we haven't got yet, um, this should actually start to rise. This is the uh, carbon uh, altitude kind of pressure thingy here. And you can set the landing altitude and the landing barometer here. Um, and then we have the wipers left and right and park. So um, I, I'm not sure if they are actually in the park position. Let's see. Yeah, they're supposed they are in the park position. And some switches you can do with your middle mouse, other switches uh, you do in the classic uh, all over the place way and find out <laughs> which way is what. Um, some are clicks. Um, so yeah, you'll find out. Y you'll find out quickly. Um, then we have the air conditioning shutoff override. RAM air is here. Annunciator digital lights test. So you can check that your annunciators are okay. This is probably something for trimming. Yeah, trimming the lights here on the annunciators. Um, so then we go up here again. So all of that here is the electric power, all the generator switches. They are usually here in the on position. And uh, here you can check the voltages, like in the Boeing, for example. You have that as well. Here's the APU, also with the APU fire. Um, at the moment, the APU isn't on yet. We're not we're not using it uh, until later. That's the galley switch for the galley power. Then comes the engine. There's the start pump. The start pump is used. Um, I think if there isn't yet any, for example, for APU start. So in order to get uh, enough um, pressure, fuel pressure, I suppose. I'm not sure what exactly this is. Um, you, you use the start pump uh, in order to start the APU. Uh, I'm not sure that you need it later for the engines. Uh, the, the manual wasn't, wasn't quite clear about that. Here's the fuel heat. Uh, we don't have an automatic fuel heat in this aircraft. So if you are in very cold conditions, you would probably want to turn this on in order to keep the fuel temperature um, in check. Here's your fuel pumps left, right, uh, center, aft and forward. And here's the starters. So you would use these switches to start your engines later on. Then we got the emergency lights, which should be in the arm position. Here it is. Then we have the seat belts. We turn them on. Also the non-smoking, I turn them on. And you can see how th these indications change. By the way, there are several pages, so you can scroll to your uh, or you can actually use these switches because each of these is a type of message. So, for example, engine relate. Uh, nee, that's not. That's where was the engine? Engine related is here. For example, this is ice related. So the pitot is still off. On this is uh, electric, for example. And then there are also some lamps here, yellow and red. So at the moment we have rudder travel. Um, mm unrestricted or something. Okay. Then what you need to do here, this is the ice protection pitot. So you put this in the captain's position and that kind of activates the pitot, I think, as far as I understand. Um, airfoil, anti-ice, windshield, anti-fog. Um, you can turn this on. I've got a switch for that. This is the engine anti-ice. We don't need it today. And uh, I'm not sure what this thing does. Tail. So, yeah, that's a quick run. And here you have all these warnings. And the idea is that in the end, before you take off, you don't have any of the lights on. That's the goal. All right, let's continue. So we do have oxygen, but there's nothing that you can do here with it. This is the kind of radio and audio panel. Um, then this is the steering tiller with a parking brake. And then when you look here, this is for your navigation display down here. Let's put these away. By the way, in order to see something, you need to turn these fellas on. They are always off when you start the aircraft. Here you can switch between modes. I've put this on a, 
um, on the hardware as well, which I haven't started yet. So uh, let me quickly do that. I keep forgetting. So VRI, I have the um, MCP combo here of VR inside. So, and then you can switch through the different modes here in the. So you just uh, use your mode, um, then there is the distance. Okay, that's this here. What this exactly does is, I'm not sure. It's suppose it's the indication when you are in the in the rows mode, you can probably um, select ADF or VOR. Then navigates airport data and waypoint. So if you click here, then later on, once we are aligned and so on, we will see airports here. We have floor lights, there's a lot of lighting switches in here, panel lights, uh, and most of them actually do work and produce some kind of uh, lighting. Then there's the clock. Mm, yeah, so the clock, the, the stop clock can be used here. Okay, I'm not sure how you reset it. I haven't yet figured out how that works. So now it's stopped. And now it's hold, I think, I suppose. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, this is the RMI, radio magnetic indicator. You can switch between NAV and ADF, one and two, and uh, get the needles here, and also the DME readout, DME receiver one, DME receiver two. Then you have the, the speedometer. No, <laughs> that's the airspeed indicator. Um, and it basically has these uh, speed bugs, not that you can change them yourself, but what happens is later on when we do our FMC setup here in the CDU, then uh, we will eventually determine the the uh, V-speeds and it is actually then possible once you execute on the route and on the settings, these V-speeds will show up here. And the same happens with the ref, V-ref on approach. So you will have an indication for your speeds automatically which is a good thing. That's our altimeter, the usual thing. Um, let me quickly check what is our atmospheric conditions here. So I go here, say details, and comes the wind 2992 because I have standard atmosphere. Yeah. So 1013, the usual thing for my test flights. This is a vertical speed indicator with um, with TCAS. So uh, that's one way of uh, looking at other aircraft in your vicinity. Uh, the other one is here. This is the weather art radar uh, COM TCAS. So um, this is a combi instrument. We're going to turn it on a bit later. This is the autopilot and auto throttle vertical and so on modes. Uh, this will tell you what the auto throttle is doing and what also your autopilot is doing vertical, horizontally, and so on, lateral modes, and, and so on and so forth. This is the brake pressure. We do have some pressure here. Okay. Um, this is the fire panel. You can do some tests. Thing is, I would have expected for these lights to go on during the test, but uh, oops, yeah, be careful because um, if you're not careful, you might actually accidentally trip these things. Okay, um, so that's the engine instruments. Here's your flaps indicator, hydraulic pressure, hydraulic quantity, fuel temperature, and so on and so forth. They look uh, similar to instruments in the classic Boeings, the uh, 300s and so on. This is your auto throttle mode kind of thing. So it's takeoff mode, takeoff flex, go around, maximum climb thrust, climb and cruise. These are the modes and they uh, set up certain certain uh, EPR values here that the auto throttle can uh, hold on if you set it into the respective mode. What else have we got here? Is the true at uh, the, the the temperature here? So we have 15 degrees outside at the moment. Then the usual instruments. Um, this is the brake temperature. At the moment, no problem as we can see. 
uh, it shows you kind of an average value of all of them you can test it and this is the hydraulic so what we can do is we can actually turn on the auxiliary pump for the beginning normally you should check outside uh, in case something starts moving uh, f yeah and here again lots of light switches acoustic switches and the set of um, uh, navigation display switches but you don't have two you have only one so unlike other aircraft where these are separated in the rotate md80 they are linked so they are the same basically right here's our auto brake and uh, not to forget especially when you're in takeoff mode uh, rejected takeoff mode you should actually or you will okay you will actually have to arm this so this is what this switch is for so you go into the to mode and then you arm it i'm turning it off at the moment i have a switch it doesn't seem to be quite right this is the pneumatic uh, switches or whatever they're called they are important if you don't turn them on you will not get your engine started because this is the kind of uh, pressured air that uh, would be used to get your engine started so in order to get anything happening up here in the air section you need to have uh, these fellas put up i'm going to do this in a moment when we get closer to engine start that's the usual thing here um com1 com2 adf and transponder the usual stuff at the moment it's in off mode here's your uh, throttle levers and flaps speed brake so flaps here speed brake here uh, you arm the speed brake by bringing it up and down okay and here is the, the trim computer or whatever that is called so this is a <laughs> an interesting little unit um, when we know how heavy we are what our cg is and with what flaps we want to take off we can dial this in it will show us the what's called the long trim and then we are going to make sure that the trim setting so this thing matches then this here since we haven't calculated our route yet we'll not touch this for the moment um, so this is the speed brake and showed you that already until extended that's a rad hood cont man uh, i'm not quite sure what that is something with the rudder hydraulic contin con not sure what that is i'm not an expert i'm not a pilot anyway this is the gear horn you you will get this at some times because uh, there are certain conditions where it thinks you should have your gear out uh, in order to turn off the alarm you would press on this button um, again an alternative long trim uh, we are not using this today this is uh, basically to you t switch the fuel on for your engines and here is also another thing here you can select a dial a flap kind of thing for your takeoff uh, we're going to do this in a moment and you then um, bring your uh, flap lever into a particular position and uh, I think that's for the slats and the flaps um, what I'm not sure is what extends what um, but I show you how I understand that you need to set this up before takeoff and then everything is okay and it works okay so what else have we got i think we are basically through okay um there is a cabin that you can explore if you want we're not going to do this uh, today i'm just going to show you them uh, very quickly here so this is the cabin it's actually quite well built and if you have the 4k textures if your system can um, <laughs> do it properly uh, it actually looks quite nice so you have a pretty large cabin here so let's close that door again right okay that's the introduction by the way you can open the window no you can't open the windows that was in the leonardo okay maybe door maybe you can maybe you can't can you can you not Mm, doesn't look like it no whatever that arrow is uh, it's not working okay 
Right, so let's go and do the FMC stuff. For that, first of all, you need to use this switch here to make it bright, because it always comes dark. Uh, press delete, press clear, because otherwise you're getting a uh, problem with your wrist, clicking those characters away with the clear key. We are in an MD88. Um, I have a pretty recent error because I updated the Navigraph. We are in version, oh, we are not in 4.3, we are in version 1.41 R3, but it is the current version. Uh, I guess I need to change my headline. Too late now. Position in it. Um, yeah, and you basically take this, put this in here, give the reference airport Echo Delta Lima Victor in our case, right? So the gate is basically one. I'm not sure if it this is actually working here. It is not. Okay. Um, there aren't also any, any other pages, uh, GPS pages or something. So take it from here, put it in here, um, and that should do. That's the center of the airport. That's why this is slightly different to 8.9. Go to the route. Now, this is pretty much similar to what you are used in the Boeing uh, um, CDU. So um, since we're flying back to, our, to the same airport, Echo Delta Lima Victor, the flight is uh, revisited one. <laughs> the runway we're going to leave from is the runway 27. And since our route is actually coming directly from the departure to the arrival, there's the runway 27, Sony 3 Sierra. Whoever watches my videos more often knows this one here. And we also go to the arrival. And as we can see, it nicely works. Not every aircraft can do this. We had uh, examples where this wouldn't work having the same airport to come back to. I'm not going to use LAA, but we're going to have it in the route uh, anyway. So um, let's go to the legs page. 210.1.4 Sonep. Fine. Sop2. So I'm going to close this by just clicking on it. And I'm also going to take Remat because we want, don't want LAA. Put that in here. And I also put in 2600 at Remat because my experience is that 3000 um, will give me a problem, very often a problem with the glide slope intercept. Right, and uh, that's it. That's our route. This part is the go around route back to LAA and then probably into a hold or something. Yeah, hold that. There it says activate, execute. And what we can do now is, um, unfortunately, you can't bring out the displays. And I haven't yet been able to program that little tool that I have, this tec uh, texture thingy. Uh, so at the moment, I don't have uh, these displays for pop out. Um, but we can already see that the route looks almost OK. There seems to be a discontinuity I have overlooked. Oops, wrong. Mm hmm that's weird okay let's see let's go into flight plan mode uh -huh. so we have step okay let's use the step though there's something definitely not quite right so now Sop to it doesn't draw all the lines. Hmm. Interesting. I actually thought that it did do that the first time round, but it looks like uh, oh, that's going to be an interesting flight. I wonder what that will look like when we're done. So maybe this repairs itself later on, but so far I would say we have a problem here. It doesn't look right. I was pretty sure that that worked the first time around, but maybe I'm getting old. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, 
let's let's get surprised. <laughs> so I go back to the root. Um, sub to. Uh, hang on, have we got maybe? Okay, let's check this again. So the departure is the Sony Three Sierra. So Sonep. Sub two, there is no discontinuity. Remat, there's also no discontinuity. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't really see this hole. Hmm. Let's finish the the whole setup. Maybe things um, come into place a bit further. Now, when it comes to fuel, so before we can fill this out, we ne need to go here and. Uh, in the documentation you could probably try and find some I, I can't remember though that I've seen any kind of charts so I'm guessing I'm guessing that the total payload um, so the fuel in all tanks I said that for our route like 4000 should be more than enough and I've also given it a total payload of 7000 it then spreads the the load over the aircraft okay uh, the trip fuel is most likely 2000 so that the landing weight it w does some calculations here so our uh, gr gross weight during takeoff is 22.8 mac so it's 46.3 and uh, that's a cg of 22.8 and i think we're going to use this then later for the flaps calculation and uh, since we haven't yet filled the aircraft what we need to do now is we need to start loading the fuel which takes three minutes we need to start loading the cargo i can do this a little bit faster and i can say load the passengers now leave this going for the moment because we're not quite done yet so our test flight altitude is 5000 and not only that we also have a transition altitude of 5000 and uh, so fuel wise I think I said 4 tons so I put in uh -huh, that didn't burn get rigged A or N hmm. ok Zero fuel weight is 36.2. The gross weight, um, yeah, but that's wrong. Obviously, it's wrong. 4.0. Okay, now. Now it's correct. Um, now 36. Is 36 all right? I think I have to. No, zero fuel weight. We need to wait that this is actually finished. So, uh, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to expedite this okay and when you do expedite things go quick and now we can go and um, hmm, press here again and then it will automatically put in the correct values reserves is uh, two tons and the cost index is my usual 25 um, there is no second page here so execute takeoff so flex temperature one degrees this hmm. so the flex temperature I usually take 45 and that gives me some V speeds 123 139 130 and 139 so our V2 is 139 the gross weight is 46.4 and we have a CG of 22 we have to remember that one okay it's a bit strange here the way they have presented this but um suppose i'll be okay right um i think we don't need to do much more here so we can go on the progress page we can see what it has calculated in the legs page uh, we now have um, and look at that now it has actually connected our line so I remember that the route looked okay 
which says that um, it needed to have all the other values. Okay, and we have the 2600 and remat so that it calculates our top of descent correctly. Right? And that's done. We are done with the setup here. Now let's quickly go through this checklist. Uh, so we're going to turn on the APU now, which is here. And we can see that the APU is starting even without the start pump. I think in the Leonardo I needed the start pump, but I can't swear it now. I don't know. So we're now waiting for the APU to come up and get onto the bus. And once that's happened, we can turn off the uh, ground power unit. There's actually a, a third place also in the CDU. So as soon as the APU is up and running, it will come up here with the blue light. There we go. And because I have already these uh, generator switches in the on position, it has now taken precedence over the external power. That's why these lights are blue. I'm going to turn on the APO air bleed and I'm going to check the pneumatic pressure. Uh, hang on, there's something missing. I told you, zack, zack. And now you can probably hear it already. So we have now air, okay? You can see this here as well. So we can turn off the, um, go to the menu page and we go to root aircraft main management. And here we press on GPU on. And we can also o close the door. So this is another, oh, I think I'm opening them now. That's not what I wanted. Let's quickly check. Uh, close, 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 retract. So, and I'm also going to send hide all from the ground handling. Okay. So pneumatic pressure check, uh, that doesn't work yet. Cockpit flood, we don't need uh, 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 emergency lights. Uh, we have armed that already. So next is engine selector, engine selector. Uh, this is the part of the checklist I haven't yet worked on. So engine select, engine sync selector off. Yeah, where was that? Uh, oh yeah, here, so that's off. The annunciators we have tested before, pneumatic crossfeed valves are open. That's the one down we just opened. Air condition switches are in the auto on position. That's down here. The window heat is on the yaw damper. We're going to turn it on now. Yaw, 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 there it is. The ART switch, where did I see that? ART, I'm not even sure what it is, but um, we need to bring it into a particular Position ART ART. The ART switch has to be in the auto position. Ah, well, ah, here it is. Yeah, and it is in the auto position. I still have to find out what ART means. Landing gear lever is down. Engine oil temperature. Yeah, that looks all okay. Hydraulic quantity is checked. The spoilers are down. The flaps are up. Hydraulic transfer pumps, uh, we're turning them off now uh, and the auxiliary pumps off as well. We haven't got the engines running yet, so we don't have hydraulics now. Uh, primary stability trim test, there is probably a test button somewhere. I don't want to do that now. Secondary stability trim of takeoff weight and trim calculations, we've done that. Carbon pressure control is auto, that's up here. It's in the auto position. Fuel shutoff levers are cut off. That's down here. And the throttle levers are throttle levers forward. Stall warning test. Stabilizer. 
Stall test we have already done. Max speed warning we've done as well. Engine fire test we've tried, but it didn't really work that well. That's the loop A and the loop B, but somehow this doesn't do anything. I don't think that's right. Aircraft weight and fuel check. Uh, master caution checked and clear. Yeah, we don't have any. And the transponder is in the standby position. Not yet, but uh, now. The parking brake is set. Thrust levers are idle. APU air is on. Pneumatic crossfeed levers open. We've done that. Pneumatic pressure hammer. We've checked it. Aircon supply switch. The aircon supply switch. Is aircon supply switch is probably somewhere up here. Ah, here. Off. The door is closed. Uh, yep. The fuel pumps. So we need to turn them fuel pumps on now. Now, um, I don't think we have anything in the center tanks. So I am not quite sure if I am supposed to turn on this pump. Start pumps switch off. That's this, so it's off now. Position lights. So the position lights, the lights are here. And the position light is actually this switch. Now I have coded this with the strobe. And the thing is, the middle position is the position lights. Down position is the strobe lights. But the strobe lights only come on after takeoff. So as soon as we lift off, uh, the strobes will actually start to work. That's what I understand. Therefore, I coded it that uh, I turn it on into the strobe position, but the position lights go on when you do so. As you can see, they are on now, but there is no strobes. Oh, I can see we still have the stairs out. Let's bring them in. Retract. So, position lights are on. Anti-collision lights, uh, they're here. Uh hard to see there there's the switch and you turn it on that's the beacon pushback clearance uh, received parking brake uh, we need to turn that off and we request the pushback so what we can try is see if good old better pushback works now yeah, it still has the position ground to carpet plan acknowledged call me through the menu when you're ready i am ready Please do come. Ground to cockpit. Tow is driving up. <laughs> so, for the pushback, uh, for the engine start, I'm going to turn these into the both positions. I am, um, the fuel pumps are on and we need to turn off the uh, the air here so that we actually have everything for the engines and Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect, set, parking brake Parking brake is set. That's the Alitalia, the Verona. There are a number of um, liveries that you get, and uh, well, Alitalia is one of them. Obviously, this is not a modern aircraft, and, and there aren't circuit. that many flying anymore. The airlines are replacing them. Starting pushback, and you may start the engines. Okay, engine igniter, system A or B. Oh, I've got it on both, so let's use B. And the engine right. So we start with the right engine 
And if everything is okay, this switch will stay down here. It does. Very good. And now you can see this coming up here and uh, as far as I understand when this reaches around 10, you open the fuel. Like now. And you can't hear much of the engines. Because they're so far back that in the cockpit you don't hear much of the engines. So in the meantime, we're going to put this on takeoff flex, which sets an EPR of uh, 2.06. Yeah, so that's going to be our takeoff. Operation complete. Please set parking brake. The parking brake is set. Disconnecting tow, stand by. And we're going to start the other engine. So I'm turning this off, I'm bringing this back, I'm opening this one, and we're starting the other engine. Oh yeah, and the other thing is, the CG we said was 22. So we move this to the 22 position. We want to take off with flaps 15. Um, let me quickly check how we actually... Performance index takeoff. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah we've defined everything. Okay, legs. Um, so we we'll bring this in the fifteen, and it calculates four as the long trim. And what I'm going to do now is, danke. I'm going to bring down. I have uh, some keys for that, or you could do this here, that's the other possibility. You bring this down and you bring this to 4. And the other thing is, for takeoff, we want to take off with flaps 15, so I put this here. Now it's disconnected and bypass bin has been removed. Hand signal on the right, I'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Thank you. Uh, oh, I haven't done that yet too many things together. <laughs> so, that's the second engine. You can hear this uh, ting. This is when the when the buses are switched. Oil pressure looks okay. Engine igniters, we're now going to turn them off. So first I turn this off, start switch, then I turn this off. And uh, now we can also turn off the APU. We activate the air supply. And uh, the anti-collision light. So, igniters off, yeah, APU bus on, remain on. So it will take some time, I think, before the APU actually spools down. Pito and static heaters on, Captain. Yeah. Uh, airfoil and engine anti-ice switches, bro. Uh, we don't need that. Air condition switches in, in the auto position, yep. Pneumatic crossfeed levers are cl pneumatic crossfeed levers. Is that them? F off hydraulic pumps. Uh, we need to have them on now into the low position or possibly the high position. I don't know. Hydraulic system check. And check engine hydraulic pump switches are on check. Okay, then we've got the flaps out. And you can see that it just turned off the disac. So, um, so basically have moved and they're now in the takeoff position. So it recognizes this by showing you this blue T and O for takeoff. 
Right, so we're basically ready for taxiing. Taxi clearance received, no slides. That are uh, those here. We we'll turn them on. The TRP thrust rating panel as required. That's this thing here. So I put it on the flex and it has uh, used the temperature we've provided here and the ER e word. The e ART reserve thrust as required. We don't need this. Flight controls. Um, for that, we need to bring back the. So okay. Looks pretty. Uh, sensitive. And we shall see. Okay. Flight controls are checked. Hydraulic auxiliary pumps on, transfer pumps on. So we turn these two fellas down here on again. Flaps and slats are set. Elevator trim is set. Radar switch and the radar switch. Where is that radar switch? I know that. Um, not sure if if that is meant or what the radar switch is to be honest um, I haven't seen it yet so if there's another switch I s yet have to find it putting this by the way into the takeoff position I put the arm switch on that's important so anti-ice we don't need, takeoff briefing performed, carbon report received. So I'm releasing and let's start with the taxi. And I think it's normal that you don't hear as much from the engines as you would in a Boeing because they're really far behind. It's not so quiet for people that sit in the back of these aircraft. I remember a couple of flights in DC-9s and uh, MD-80 something, also to Scandinavia, and it was really, really loud in the back. That's where the engines were. And it was pretty quiet in the front of the aircraft. So roughly where the screw is, not quite so like this here. This is basically, I think we are pretty much in the middle. Let's check, not quite. Uh. Okay, ah yeah, at the end of the wiper. So the end of the wiper is, is roughly when you're on the middle line, just for orientation. That's in my view, the way I have put up the view now. You need to find this out yourself. So I'm going to set up the MCP. So 272 is the heading. Five thousand is the altitude. And uh, what have we set is the V-speed. Let's go down here again. Let's go to the root takeoff. 139. And I'm actually putting on 139 plus 10. Ten to fifteen over the V2. So we're turning on the flight director and don't turn on the auto throttle it's important uh, we're going to use the EPR limit for takeoff EPR mode 
This will only come on once the uh, we are in the takeoff and the auto throttle has been activated. You won't see anything showing up here before. This is different in other implementations where you can partly see already the mode. Here you can see the mode only after um, everything is more or less running. And we need to check this. So takeoff speeds uh, are confirmed. Runway heading is uh, set. Uh, what we can also do is we can already set up the course. Takeoff clearance departure. Okay, so. Since there's a clear day today and we don't have any cut to operations or something, we can go to this holding line. Otherwise, we would have to stop a little bit earlier in the previous line. I think that is not to disturb uh, the cut to landings. Park brake is set. So, the igniters, uh, we're supposed to turn them on. The igniters, the igniters, I think. Is it that there? Yeah. Overhead annunciator panel is checked. Now we do have still, we have the flight recorder off and we have the parking brakes on. And we have rudder travel unrestricted, ignition system B selected. So I'm um, not sure about this. Yeah. I'm not sure if the checklist is correct here. Um, the overhead annunciator panel. Now, the flight recorder, I haven't yet found where to turn this fella on. And the light will actually go out once we are airborne. So, not sure <laughs> how accurate that is, right? Uh, engine wing anti ice is off. Blank bank angle 15 degrees. That's uh, probably here somewhere. Bank angle 15 degrees, really? can't remember that you can set this somewhere maybe that comes from the wrong RT switch auto the so the ART switch is uh, where was that again the ART switch is where is that ART switch oh yeah here yeah it is in the auto position isn't it yeah, yeah it's in the auto position TFE thrust rating is takeoff in our case it's takeoff flex Toga buttons and throttles press. So you press these buttons and what you can see now is that it has got up some orange which is something that it wants to achieve. Um, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure what this something 50S, <laughs> not sure what that means, but we've done it. Uh, check tack off, tack off, checked FMA. Ah, yeah, they probably mean track because that is an R, not an A. Uh, so that is track off, track off. Okay. Fuel balance is, um, yeah, it's checked. Where's our fuel? 15 fish temperature. Uh, hang on, where? Ah, here. No, that's the fuel flow. Flu for, no, no. Where's fuel? Uh, good question. And to fuel flow use. Where is the tanks? Oh, here. Yeah, it's it's roughly okay. We had some fuel used by the APU. Spoilers. Uh, we have to put them up. Armed. Stabilizer trim is set. The auto brake is in the RTO. Landing lights. So we're going to turn the landing lights on now. That's these here. Um, then the strobes, we're going to have them on. The taxi lights, we turn that one off now. Then the transponder is goes into the XPDR mode, basically in here. Timer, um, the timer, where was it? So we'll 
suppose we'll just start it like this bird strike caution check chronometer start parking brake off and let's line up That's extra has. It's a freeware plugin. Okay, that's that's good enough. Now, um, so be careful. Don't engage your auto throttle anywhere else than on the runway when you're ready. And the other thing you do is before you engage your auto throttle, you bring forward the levers to in and about 1.4 um, e per here. So you look for a 1.4 value here, roughly and then you activate the auto throttle and that is basically means we have the takeoff we have the takeoff power set um, what I'm also not sure is if you engage the nav mode immediately so what I do is I press here which I think uh, yeah, I'm, I'm never quite sure um, because we've we've set up a heading here okay and then there's the switch and I think it should enable the heading mode once we turn on the autopilot um, the other alternative is that we put it on nav track so nav track is basically FMS at the moment and we can also put this on VNAV later but at the moment we are going to use the auto throttle EPA mode and then we can probably change this to VNAV later on so, um, yeah, so I'm now bringing forward the levers. Until they're about 1.4 and then I'm activating the auto throttle. And off we go. And I'm not sure that the auto throttle is working. So I had this before. Uh, are we now in the clamp mode? I'm, I'm not sure. It says clamp, but I don't think that the auto throttle has engaged properly. All right, so gear up. And we need to, whoops, move over here. Uh, follow the flight director <sighs> have difficulties steering with this is rather sensitive and we are accelerating far too much because the auto throttle isn't working so I'm now putting this into VNAV mode and I'm activating the autopilot and I bring back the flaps because we are far too fast already. So that didn't work out well. That did not work out well, and this isn't working out well either. This is 
yeah, uh, this aircraft, I tend to have this kind of nonsense going on and I'm not always sure why that is. So. Yeah, we are far too fast. Um, our speed is far too high. So this went completely wrong. First time around, it worked okay. This time, I knew that something is not quite right because it just didn't didn't show me the right things. Um, I'm not sure now. Let's see. So next waypoint is Lima Victor 204. I think I need to possibly, oh no, it is already showing the right one. So I'm going to try, well enough wise we are okay. And I think I'm going to leave it now in speed mode here because the auto throttle gives me a lot of trouble. Basically every single time I have something wrong, but the last takeoff I did was actually quite okay. And this time it is messed completely up. So this is something that I haven't yet, I don't feel comfortable with in this aircraft yet. <coughs> Not sure what I'm doing wrong or if this is just the way it is at the moment. I don't know. It is different to the Leonardo. So the Leonardo reacted differently. <laughs> yeah. Your guess is as good as mine. Now we have center fuel pressure low. That's right, because the center tank is actually empty. So I'm turning those pumps off again. Mm. So we are in this strange mode, which is probably means 5000. I guess that this 50 is flight level 50. So in theory, that's also something that did not work all the time. In theory, it should have... Um, and don't tell me why I... I can't... Uh, <laughs> I don't get rid of the 100. That's also something I haven't yet quite figured out. Aha, uh -huh, okay, now. Somehow you need to grab it somewhere else and then... But it's very hard to find the right click spot here. So it didn't stop at 5000. I had an idea because uh, it didn't show the uh, the right thing here. So we're now in altitude hold mode. Okay. And we are in 5100. Okay. And that means we need to go down a little bit okay right so yeah that was <laughs> unfortunate but that's what I have with this aircraft there's always or not always but very often things go unexpected I thought I've done the same thing that compared to the first time round, but uh, obviously I haven't. So something was wrong. All right, auto brake uh, is off. No, it actually isn't really off, but um, now it's off. Uh, TRP climb, that's this thing here. So we put this now in the climb position. But since we're not using the EPER, um, so w we have undergone the altitude so altitude. obviously I'm doing something wrong here again I forgot probably to press this button okay let's do it the other way around we're going to reach 5000 one way or the other so basically this indication means 5000 but um, it didn't stop as we can as we saw it didn't stop so, auxiliary and uh, transfer pumps we can switch off now. It's over here. And the center fuel times are already off. So, altimeters are okay. We are in standard atmosphere anyway. 
um, aircraft and engine performance monitor, landing lights above 10,000, and the cruise is the radar check, continual checks, continual checks, aircraft and engine performance. So next is the descent checklist, but there we need to wait. Now, this is one of the aircraft, whoops, when we look down here, that does not go, uh, I think this one, oh no, actually it goes all the way, yeah, that's right. So it goes all the way. I think it was uh, another aircraft I tested recently that cut short again. Yeah, so this one is fine. And look at here. So, why am I not stopping at 5000? What the hell is wrong here? Okay, we try that again. And if at first you don't succeed, you damn try it as often until you find out why. So, And nope. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, but I can't get this damn thing to stop at 5,000. It doesn't just do it. As simple as that. It doesn't do it. There isn't that much <coughs> I can do different here. You know? I thought that this is the arm mode. So, let's try that again, 500 feet. I thought that this means it is armed. So upon reaching 5,000, I expect it to. No, okay, so. <sighs> I must be completely stupid today, so I don't know. Is it me or is it is it this aircraft? I can't get it to stop at 5,000 feet. I was pretty sure that that should work, but um, I'm not sure now. I'm a bit confused. So, Sonep should be turning any moment. Okay, so um, let's see if we can get back into VNAV mode um, and see what happens if we try that. So I'm pressing VNAV now and it actually brings back it brings back the power because it tells us that we should fly 240 feet. And in theory, we should have stopped, but now it, it I don't know, I, am I stupid or what? I mean, why, why is this thing descending? There is no reason for it to descend. 
5000 is the lemon altitude why are you doing this <sighs> so this is vertical speed now I'm putting VNAV descent so it wants already to descend or what why would you want to do that it's far too early for that well, let's see what it does then, if it wants to descend. So, mode is now VNAV descent, NAV track, 2600 FMS speed. Okay, descent checklist. Approach and landing briefing. Yeah, um, actually, I need to go here as well and select the flaps 40. Mm. So, flaps 40 is 114 knots. Okay, and you can see now that it has put the, the box here again. Landing data is confirmed, altimeter is set, transition altitude uh, we've crossed already, hydraulic auxiliary pumps. So these two fellas, they have to go on again. Okay. Radio altimeter set on. Why do I have to turn this on? I thought that this should be... Where do I do that? Radio altimeter set on audio markers. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe not in this, because I can't remember seeing this actually here. Pressurization checked and set. So the nav radius we've set already. This is the DME. This is the ILS. And the landing lights. Uh, are still on, we haven't turned them off. The fuel pumps are on, yeah. VREF speeds, we have checked already 147, um, and the altimeter and back set and cross checked. So I wonder if it's going to stop at, at 2,600. I mean, we're we're down far too early. For me, this is a bit too early. Yeah, but maybe we'll see. But at this current rate, hmm. going to be at 2600 far too early. Well, we're going to be there at Soptu, but we're supposed to be there at Rimat. So whatever that VNAV path thingy is that calculates here, so it's not quite... Oh, it wants us to be at Soptu as well at 2600. Okay. I think it changed that then. I thought it was a higher value here before, but eh, well, there you go. So, now let's see what happens. It 
it should level off does it level off it does not level off right no oh yes it does a little bit late but uh, it leveled off well then right um, speed wise I think we're a little bit fast so 240 at remat is far too fast so I'm going to switch into speed mode and I'm going to reduce to 220 actually let's reduce to 180 because we need to get those flaps out need to try and get these displays brought out aha so this this seems to be the radar altitude yeah it is And I'm going to arm the localizer, that's VR lock. One one ten decimal seven, okay. We can already see the glide slope, it's here. There's the localizer, it's here. I'm going to arm the speed brake. The auto brake. Um, I'm going to set. I'm not sure if I have to arm this one. No, I don't. I think for this it doesn't need it. Spoilers are armed. Slats and flaps. So the glide slope is actually coming in. So I'm switching to ILS mode. I'm bringing up flaps. Auto brake is set, engine igniters are required. Not sure if that's those here. EOAP check, bang angle, okay. And down with the speed. Two hundred and forty five. Next stage of flaps, gear out. So we're on the glide slope on the localizer that has worked well. Okay, and we're going to set altitude three thousand. We'll go around. We're waiting for flaps 40. And when flaps 40 is out, you see the green light here, which means that's the landing flaps. So, gear is down, flaps are out, everything is fine. Now I'm going to try and uh, bring my throttle levers roughly in the position and then I'm going to try and turn the auto throttle off. Now, these switches don't really work, so I'm switching it off with the main switch. All the throttles are off and the autopilot is off. Bit 
fast, so I'm going to reduce speed now. Ah, we are a bit, we are a bit very fast, yeah. Oops. Oh, and it's very sensitive. The the controls are very sensitive. It's one of those aircraft where small, very small movements cause an awful lot of reaction. So. Too bad, I would say. And reverse out. I have external instruments, that's why we can do this here in this view. For me, this is actually very good because I see much better. Reverses in. And I can still see how fast I am and uh, my altitude and all that. Altitude and so on. Okay, manual braking. Right, let's see how that will look in the replay. So, what view will we take? Let's use this one. And off we go. Mm, are we a little bit far? think we should have started a little bit later but now nah. we're almost there now now you can see where I took over <coughs> and uh, yeah I got a little bit rocky there because uh, yeah I had to get used to you know it's very small movements on my yoke so I might have to write myself another script here for this one which ew, which kind of um, dampens down the reactions of the yoke to make it a bit more realistic. But I got it under control then, in time. see not too bad slightly off center that's when the auto brake engaged and the reverses and the speed brakes Right, and that was it. So let's turn off the replay mode. Oops, okay, let's bring it out of this mode again. Let's bring in the flaps. All right. 
So the Rotate MD80, it is a very nice plane. Um, it takes some time to get used to it, definitely. This is not the kind of aircraft that you can easily kind of climb in and then everything is easy peasy and, and so on. I still have to find out why I don't stop at my altitude when I'm in vertical speed mode. <laughs> Maybe that is intended. I'm not sure about that, but uh, could be. Maybe I have forgotten something. I don't know. But uh, apart from that little issue, so far it went quite well. All the all the modes uh, worked out so far. The route was flown correctly. And uh, yeah, the sensitivity on the yoke, that's something I need to correct for myself to make it a bit easier. Um, so, but apart from that, nice aircraft and uh, in the meantime definitely worthwhile but again you do need a decent system and especially you need a decent graphic card you need minimum of four gigabytes of ram ideally you have more because this aircraft will take it out it will need it um, you can use the 2k textures but obviously then things don't look as nice as they do with 4k textures obviously Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope that was somewhat helpful. Um, until next time.